I am Michael. I identify as a gardener and a care partner. I also identify as an autistic person who lives with sensory processing and executive function challenges that make interaction with the healthcare system a challenge for me. I created this video to support dialogue around the development of a positive therapeutic relationship. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and ideas around how to support our interactions and develop a positive therapeutic relationship. Imagine my visual sensory domain is like a cup with a line drawn halfway up. A certain amount of visual stimuli is required to get to the line and for the visual input to register at all in my brain. If there is not enough input to get to the line, I miss the visual stimulus. If too much visual stimuli goes in, it will overflow the cup and my sensory system and I become overwhelmed. In this regard, my visual sensory system is very tiny, like a thimble. It takes very little visual input to overwhelm me. I have learned about myself that I have unique differences regarding how I process and integrate sensory information, as well as challenges in my executive function. I am learning to reduce the stress and anxiety I encounter in the dental office. I need to primarily focus on physical objects that can support my interaction with my oral health care providers. Our interaction with these physical objects helps to moderate and clarify the sensory and cognitive inputs I encounter when I visit the dentist. This helps me manage overstimulation issues. On its own, touch is my trickiest sensory domain, and the one that will probably sound most foreign to you as I describe my experiences. Experiences which terrify me, which frustrate me through struggling to put into words others might be able to identify with. I have a decreased ability to localize touch, especially light touch. This is true even with my eyes open, and can be frightening for me. For example, if you are poking in my mouth, I cannot tell where you are touching, what you are poking the inside of my mouth with, or if you are actually poking my mouth in the first place. Another important challenge my sense of touch presents me is that oftentimes I perceive certain textures are painful, the way some people respond to nails on a chalkboard or squeaking a balloon with shivers down their spine is analogous to certain textures for me. For example, certain glove finishes or wrinkles will be worse than shivers down my spine. My nervous system will interpret this as pain, as if the glove in my mouth is a sharp knife. My nervous system cannot tell the difference. Some gloves and the materials which they are made from, as well as some isolation systems, overload my executive functionality by intensifying my sensory perceptive issues. In the dental office for me, the biggest challenge I face are gloves used where just the fingertip is textured. The palm and most of the finger relative to the tip has a different but equally painful texture to that of the fingertip. This difference is enough to fool my sensory system into thinking each finger represents its own hand. In the process of my appointment, I am left on multiple occasions thinking one of these phantom hands has torn its glove. The pain triggers other terrifying thoughts and experiences of contamination of my mouth from my healthcare provider. When my vestibular sense is overwhelmed by too little suction to adequately manage the fluid buildup in my mouth, 
The perceptions my overwhelmed sense of touch leaves me with are most unpleasant. The poor management of this water causes me to perceive I might inhale all of it at any moment. Something I am told people who are subjected to waterboarding often could experience. My overworked executive function exhausts me. Sensations confuse me. I don't outwardly panic. That is worse. I'm constantly working to understand I'm not feeling your curette in the iris of my right eye. Your mirror is not thrust down my throat. Your glove represents one hand, rather than five separate hands in my mouth simultaneously, that it is safe for me to swallow without hurting you, based only on my lack of ability to trust my sense of touch. All overwhelm me. Painful anxiety from touch. Overwhelming visual. Freeze me in terror, forcing me to endure trauma which robs my abilities to communicate in ways that meaningfully address the underlying problem. My failures to accurately communicate in these times alters my situational awareness to a point where I panic further, aggravating my misinterpretation of what is going on around me and exponentially increasing the amount of pain. Choices where our sensory environment actively supports my comprehension, communications, and situational awareness, when the appointment overwhelms my ability to function, where my direct participation in as much of my appointment as is safe for me grounds me in the present moment in the accurate space and time of our interaction. I dream the consensus choice-making process directs our interaction at the time of our appointment to begin by practicing joint hand hygiene, followed by letting me help you put your gown and gloves on. and then reciprocating for me. Without words, this tells me where I am at, the dentist, what part of the appointment we are at, just getting started, and allows us to start using pressure and touch to communicate. This communication is actively supported as I listen to your verbalization of what you are doing as we do it together. This helps orient me to what part of the appointment we are at, how much longer a procedure will last. Five, four, three, two, one, and tell me what you are doing. I dream that I receive care in as upright a position as is possible. Well, I know that I will need to invert myself to receive about half my care. I realize that this is easier for me if the chair is pre-reclined, allowing me to roll myself into it. It is another important way I ask our environment to be an active participant in my care. Thus, outsourcing my executive function to our environment in a way that encourages us to intentionally, proactively, and positively interact with these major challenges 
I experience when our environment is doing its best to promote my dysregulation. Onomatopoeia of both sound and touch is exchanged where your description of the object you pass to me allows me to experience the characteristics of it in a safe manner. When my current experience of the object, with your guidance, reassures me this object has not changed, that my past understands it is safe enough for me to interact with again. As my sense of touch explores this object, secondary environmental inputs help me safely co-regulate our collaborative change in my sensory experience. I will pass it back to you, indicating my consent to our going further. Thank you.